Yeah. I want to en enlighten you with just very few things. You know me, I always say the simplicity of the project. And those people who think otherwise, those are the people that call it a uh, complicated uh, project. But uh, God farming is quite simple if you know the approach. Uh, now, today, I'm going to talk about a few things that is really uh, perturbing all of us. And uh, that is the sudden death of those animals, or more so the big ones and even the kids. Uh, as per now, what I'm seeing as a challenge, you know, um, in the first days when I started posting these videos, we had issues of uh, PPR, uh, CCPP, you know, those kind of diseases that used to bring uh, diarrhea, nozzle discharge, then cough, and then the mortality could happen. So we no longer have that, you get? Uh, I think we have progressed, and like right now, we are really uh, being attacked with just very few diseases that are even managed, which are even manageable. There is manageable diseases that comes as a result of poor management. But there, there is such kind of, uh, like CCPP, PPR, those are just uh, pandemics that can come in and then shoot many animals. But for this case, we have uh, simple, simple challenges in my farmers, of which I'm telling you, so that you people can understand it and you can know how to approach it. Uh, one of the sh things that we have is a sudden death. Uh, most times, if it is not tox toxins, it is hot water that can really cause this kind of uh, situation. Not, not, uh, not this. The characteristics is an animal waking up very well, it is very healthy. Then when you reach in the evening, you find two, three animals already dead. Or an animal leaves home when it is okay, then it goes to the field and dies suddenly there and then. Even the kids themselves, they can suddenly die, minus even showing any clinical sign. But these are the things that we have to look at um, physically, if an animal starts to bring at least uh, the saliva, eh, that is a sign of hot water, but it has not overtaken the body. You get it? Then some other sign is an animal starting to move on one side, rotating, or an animal staggering. But that can come in a very short time. Then some other thing, if an animal dies, let's say if you have many animals, then an animal dies there and then. You find an animal having a lot of salivas, they have a lot of uh, nozzle discharge. Actually, the nozzle, nozzle discharge might not come, but the froth, it's called the froth, can come. And then you find an animal where it's dying from, it kicks, it fights. It can show you that an animal was struggling and kicking and everything. So that is a sign of hot water. I said sudden death, an animal dying when it's crying, an animal kicking when it's dying, an animal stretching the neck when it's dying. Or when it dies, it brings the froth and then the salivas from the mouth. And then when you find where it is, it kicks a lot. That disease, is can easily be managed and that is the same ca case with the kids you remember i told you kids are very weak animals because their body immunity is really low and they are still getting the immunity from the milk of the mothers so when that kind of disease comes it can shoot many kids because they are very weak what happens hot water brings uh, water in the heart and then the heart fails to pump the blood. So those conversions you see an animal kicking, trying to struggle, it's because it can no longer, the brain can no longer get oxygen because the blood cannot be pumped from the heart. The heart is already weakened. So you people, what do we do to handle that kind of situation? If you see that kind of situation, I do advise you, at least inject all your animals with uh, four meals, those are the old animals like this size, four meals, all of your animals. So that will stop 
the pathogen to multiply in the body and then to find the solution. What is the solution? That is spraying. If you're spraying very well, you cannot have issues with hot water. But now that comes, somebody might spray very well, but when the ticks have built the resistance to the acaricide that you use, I always say, I do not mention that this is the best acaricide, but the usage of that acaricide matters a lot. And then two, um, I cannot say that this brand is the one that we have to use, but it depends on how um, resistant the ticks are in your area. So if they have resisted a certain acaricide, let's say, let's say duodi, then you have to change to some other acaricide that doesn't belong to that same class. We should learn how to understand the molecules. Let's use these people or uh, drug companies to give you proper and uh, proper differences between the acaricides. Because some people are fond of using same acaricides but saying that we have changed. Yet they are changing the brand names. Yet the molecule itself is the same. So you people, before you buy an acaricide, I want you to, where you're buying that acaricide from, show them the acaricide that you've been using if you have those kind of situations. Let me tell you one thing. Some people disagree with me when I tell you that it is spraying problem that is having those kind of issues. But if you spray well, you will never find those kind of issues. What do I mean by spraying well? Make sure you mix a right concoction. Make sure you spray all your animals and they all get wet. Make sure that your animals are really sprayed very well and they are all wet. You will find a month, two months or five months by having those kind of attacks. So my dear, that is one of the problems that people have been calling me about. Those sudden death. Eh, you know, most of the diseases that attacks our animals, at least they give them some time. At least an animal to show a sign. But that is one of the diseases that I have discovered that doesn't allow to uh, see any clinical sign. An animal comes, go, then dies abruptly. You get it? So that is how we can do it. If you sense that kind of stuff in your flock, please try to use the long-acting oxen inject all of them, then also revise your spraying system. Even the kids, the kids are also sprayed. One farmer was telling me I don't spray the kids. Spray the kids, let them wait and use the same concentration like the one you use for the old animals. People, we can do that. It's very simple stuff. We can do it and we can raise it. For your information, I have gotten an opportunity or chance that many people have come up in this project. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to help them achieve. I'm trying to make sure that these people are making it right. And then if we accumulate the animals in our country, because most of you people are telling me that if the animals are really very many, where are we going to sell them? I'm again telling you, I want Uganda or Africa or Tanzania or where, wherever you're watching me from, make your country have a lot of meat. And you make the world news that this is the country that has a lot of goat's meat and they don't have where to sell it. But if that doesn't happen, then you people, I don't know. Because like right now, yesterday, somebody was telling me he needs over 600 heads of goats every week. And then he can pay me the money, of which I don't have it. You get it? So that hurts me a lot to find that some people are really looking for animals. We have the grasses, we have the people that can guide us, the drugs are available that we cannot ably accumulate the animals and then we sell. That really makes me unhappy and it makes me sad in my country or even some other people. But you people, this is a job that we can create and then makes more money for all of us let it be the old let it be the young generation let it be the poor orange if you do two goats you're contributing 
to the fraternity. If you're doing 1,000, you're much contributing to the fraternity of God family. I think we can do it. Let's just do it. That's a simple advice. Take it and then do it. Thank you very much.